This show contains adult content. The Crow Boys are in a cave in the great maze of California, a hideout of Old Boot. Uh, It's been a relaxing time. Old Boot has had all the amenities and luxuries that you did not expect to be here, uh, but he's made available to you here. Uh, How many days are you waiting until uh, you sort of take things out into the great maze? I'm thinking two days. Yeah, I agree. Two days. That sounds great. Do you guys want to just skip past this, or you want to use some interlude mechanics? What do you want to do? I don't know. I think Thaddeus kind of has to talk to Mayhew. Yeah, Yeah, that that makes sense. Are you guys allowing Mayhew weapons, or no? Hell no. Yeah, not until after. uh, Thaddeus will flat no until he can talk to him. Great. Man, two days. No one really to talk to. I guess he's fucking playing solitaire. Or maybe there's just a card game going on. Thaddeus sits down for the card game. Are you cool with that? Other people in the scene? I mean, other people could be in the scene, but Thaddeus isn't playing cards with him. I think if they're playing mm. cards, then Thaddeus will come into the scene. The opening shot is uh, this barrel that's been dried out. The old boot popped up from underneath the water. A couple of pieces of scrap pulled around. A chair or two brought off the boat. Who's playing poker with Mayhew? Abel, you said you were? Yes. Oh, I want to be there too. Abel, Lucky, Mayhew, and then uh, Thaddeus walks up. Uh, Thaddeus, he's been drinking, sitting in the corner, kind of brooding this whole time. Um, it has been, you know, relatively relaxing, but uh, Thaddeus has been kind of in sour spirits. So he'll get up and stumbles over to this barrel. Hey, you boys, uh, you all playing cards, huh? Yep. Getting getting all chummy, having, having a nice time. I wouldn't say chummy, but we're having a good time. Been drinking, Thaddeus? <laughs> I've been drinking. What's the matter to you? What else are we going to do? Well, it's just been a while since I've seen you drink is all. Well, I had some things on my mind, and uh, well, this uh, this here bottle has been making it easier for me, and he sort of slams it down on the, the table. Abel kind of um, swipes up the cards with one hand off the table and starts shuffling as he leans back, gives Thaddeus a long kind of measured look, just watching to see where this is going to go. So he shuffles the cards. Them boys back at the... Uh, Back of that island said that uh, that weird drink of theirs would have you all fucked up and addled for for a day or so, you know? How you feeling, Mayhew? I'm feeling fine now. I um, think you boys got everything out of me. It's kind of strange. Uh, he looks around, uh, kind of up to Abel, who's not making eye contact with him, and then up to you, and his gaze, like, immediately pulls away from you, like he's intimidated by you. <laughs> All my cards are on the table, it seems like, so... No, all your cards? Yeah. That's strange. I I think you got at least one more up that sleeve of yours. I got a question for you. (coughs) Shoot, Kane. Takes another swig of the whiskey bottle in. Abel frowns and starts dealing out the next round of cards. In, In all your time as an agent, how many people you think you, uh, you know, mess with their heads... Uh, he looks at his cards, frowns, and then uh, puts their edges back down on the barrel. Uh, I don't know. Too many to count? Lost count. Yeah. yeah. That's what I fucking thought. Do you ever consider what it does to the life of the people when they forget? Yeah, it probably saves them. <laughs> saves them? Otherwise, the, me or another agent would be putting them in the ground. Yeah. Oh, so, the, so they're dead. Or they just have days, weeks. Years of memories just lost, and that's better? That's not exactly fair, but yeah. I mean, I'd say it's better than death, wouldn't you? Mm. Wouldn't you rather forget the worst thing that's ever happened to you? For most people, that's any time they're in contact with an agent. You ever you ever blacked out before, Agent Mayhew? You ever lost memory? Uh, drinking, sure. You ever wonder what happened during that time? Certainly, yeah. People ever tell you what you did and you just can't believe them? You know, <clears throat> Kane, what are you getting at? You know, it seems to me like we're, we're not at cross purposes here. We're working towards the same goals. We both want this woman dead. So why don't you speak plainly telling me what's on your mind? And, and maybe don't treat me as a proxy for the entire agency of the U.S. government. Well, you're the only agent I ever met, so forgive me if that's what's going to happen. That you know. I suppose I can't fault you on that. I just... I think it's worse to live not knowing the best parts of your life just because you had 
one bad day. And I think that you never considered what happens to the people who care about those that you uh, affected with that little rod of yours. That mining accident, it was more than just a bunch of us. No good, lost souls for a job. I had friends. I had somebody who gave a damn about me, and you took that away. So I've been keeping an eye on you, and I'm going to continue making sure you're on the uh, up and up. Because I can't have you do that to any of the rest of these boys here. If I catch one whiff, one whiff, Mayhew, that you're not on the up. I swear I'll stick that spear through your eye. You hear me? I hear you playing, Kane. It's clear to me that I owe you an apology. I'm sorry I had to do what I did, but you have to understand. This ain't exactly what I would have picked either. But as you boys know, there's more in this world than most folks can handle. And it's clear to me now that you're not most folk, Kane. Well, I suppose you're right about that. But the agency has a mission and a goal. I'm a goddamn patriot trying to keep most people safe. We're trying to keep most people away from the shit that you and I have had to deal with for longer than I care to know. So I apologize to you. And yes, it does hurt when I have to do that to people. But goddamn, I would rather do that than fill them full of lead. You know, there's another way. What? The evils that you've seen, you know that we've seen, they're out here whether you uh, make people forget or not. So what, you want to let everybody tell their mom about the thing that crawls in the night that guns can't kill, Thaddeus? No. You think that's... No. A- what I want is, is for you to give them some sort of way to, to process what they've seen. It's- there ain't no process in the horrors that you and I have seen, Kane. Well, it takes time, and it takes friendship. It takes compassion. Kindness. You can't just wipe it away and hope that they won't see something again. The terrors don't go away. You can only make the people stronger and hope that that's enough. But keeping them coddled, forgetful, that ain't no way to treat them. There's no way this nation should be handling their folk. You think on that. And that is will sort of like check him with the, the whiskey bottle and walk off. Howdy folks, I'm Caleb Sunstead, your host and game marshal. Sounds Like Crows is brought to you with the support of our patrons Aaron Blackston, Aria Weiss, Greg Gray, Jared, and Suzanne Hagen, along with all of our other patrons at patreon.com forward slash sounds like crows. All music on the show is provided by Rudy Zuniga, Levi Rojas, or licensed by Voidcore Productions. Deadlands Reloaded in the Savage World system are owned by the Pinnacle Entertainment Group. And with all that out of the way, folks, welcome back. To the Weird West. We cut to a shot of the California sky, blue and overcast with hints of gray. The shadows on the clouds are ominous, and the only sound that can be heard echoing through the great maze, these massive plateaus, is the burning of the hybrid engine of Old Boots' boat as it powers through the maze. The lightest uh, hint of rain has begun to drop on Old Boots' boat as uh, you draw near to Mayhew's navigational calculation. Should be close now. Storm will get bad soon. Uh, He kind of looks to the speed of Old Boots' boat. We're about an hour out, boys. I mean, this whole plan should take a little bit, shouldn't it? Yeah, I mean, at least an hour or two. You think just an hour or two? I mean, we gotta be quick, right? If we get bogged down in there, we're good as dead. Yeah, Harper's right. The longer we're up there, yeah, it's gonna be bad. Well, are we all going up there? Wait, I mean, I thought we were doing Abel's plan. We are doing Abel's plan. Listen, it's been a couple of days, and well, if I'm honest, I don't really listen to Abel all that much. What, what was his plan again? Abel glares. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta get in there first. Well, if any of us is going to be able to, it's uh, good old Ellis here. Are you boys going to give me a gun or what? I don't know, Abel. You think he deserves a gun? I spent hours on that goddamn shit y'all fed me. You know I'm on the up and up. I ain't going to kill nobody in cold blood. Never have, never will. If you want this to go right, another gun never hurt. 
Abel shrugs, tosses him a rifle from Old Boot's cabinet. He chambers the gun and looks up at the sky. And uh, we fade from this light rain to a thunderous storm. Abel's got a smile on his face up at the bow of the ship, leaning forward. He's, one, excited they're about to get into it, and two, really excited it's raining. For some Colorado boys, I don't know if scary is the right word, but the sea is choppy in the Great Maze. These waves that aren't too high just because of the nature of the maze, but they're very chaotic. And the listing of the waves is uh, sickening, if nothing else. And I imagine most of you are soaked to the bone. Lightning strikes and thunder sounds overhead as you approach. We get a establishing shot as Old Boot's boat careens around a corner. The sound of the Ghost Rock's screaming engine barely audible in the uh, thunderous downpour. His boat, even in the foreground, is dwarfed by the massive fortress in front of you. Built atop a large mesa in the bones of a mission. It, it looks like a fort. Uh, four imposing turrets look down on the maze a hundred feet below. And on the top, channels have been dug around this fort uh, leading up to the cliff where the rain water that pours down falls in massive torrent waterfalls that crash down onto water wheels below. Water wheels that are themselves 40 feet above the water itself. As lightning strikes, you can see it strike the balloon of an airship towered and tethered above the fortress looming in the gloomy, hazy sky above you. As it strikes, the blue light is turned to green as it courses and finds circuits in the wires surrounding the large balloon of the airship. And for almost a second, like a quarter of a second, the whole balloon is lit up with blue and green light illuminating the fortress below it as it's powered by the power of nature itself. Well, fuck, boys. I ain't never seen something like that. Yeah, this is a storm like you don't get out east. Hold on to your heads, boys. We're going for a ride. Old Boot's going to make a boating roll here at negative four oh, because of the what? conditions. Um, This is for Old Boot not to take damage. It's not like you won't be able to approach, but he may run into some rocks on the approach. He's got a D10, obviously. Like the shipper himself. Please, Old Boot, don't the run boat. us aground. He rolled a four, so that's a zero. Um, old Boot's gonna Benny it. What's his ship called? I don't know. What do you guys think Old Boot's ship <laughs> is called? I don't know. Oh my god, what if it's the name of his now forgotten dead wife? Oh shit. Wait, is the name Maribel? Why would he name her? Maribel's a, good. Why would he name a boat after his wife? Because he, because he loved would, her. And, yeah, but you don't you don't name a like your car after your wife. Yeah, yeah but boats maybe are different. maybe he also didn't have like a name for the boat and for some reason after he like wife disappeared, he's got this name stuck in his head. Oh, that'd be cool. Oh my or maybe god. he doesn't even remember the name because it's his wife's name. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, or maybe it's a completely different name. I, he would have to remember it, I guess. Or at least he could see it on the side. Oh, just of the, oh, I don't know why I named it that. But oh, I'm, I'm that's not, good. Uh, it was just painted sure on there. It was already... He said Maribel. Have we used that before? No. Maribel. It's a good name for a ship. Maribel Boot. Maribel is last name's food? <laughs> Dang, this is a so fucking choice lore for old boot this session. <laughs> Top person. Tier polish this last name lore. Oh my god. Oh, boot. He rolls into a three. His boat is going to take some damage. As we crash directly into the Mesa. Instead of rolling damage, because like the ship just has toughness, so it's not going to be very dramatic if I do it that way. How I'm going to do it is we're going to look at the vehicle crit table, and we're just going to roll on that. That makes sense. A six. The vehicle suffers a hit in the body with no special effects. So much that like... exciting. Uh, exciting. Uh, well... <laughs> Like wild cards, you guys, uh, vehicles have wounds. So Maribel takes the first of three wounds. 
Old Boot desperately tries to hold her under control. And normally, Old Boot sort of has like a nonchalant smile on his face. But now his brow is furled and the sweat is mixed with the rainwater on his forehead as he desperately fights with the wheel to keep it under control. We cut outside the boat as the whole ship is raised by this wave and pushed towards uh, the wall of the mesa. Old Boot yells, Hold on there, boys! And everybody's got to make an agility roll. Oh, uh, dude. Oh, that's not okay. That's a okay. D10 for me. Alex, do you mind rolling for me tonight? Yeah, I'll roll for you. <laughs> wow, thanks, <laughs> Alex. Wow, look at that, Isaac. You got a 10 that blew up. You got a 17. I'm gonna... <laughs> you got a 17. <laughs> <laughs> I had a 7. I'm gonna use that to save anybody that has a bad time. Not Thaddeus. No, for my once agility in blows life. up. That's a you have a D8 in agility? Hell yeah, baby. I got a fight. What the fuck? I stabby stabby. That what a luck you get? A uh, nine. I got a 10. Wow. Okay. What about Grace? Oh, you're right. Thank well, you. And a boot. D4 and a... Who? Just kidding. I know who Grace is. And Come Mayhew. On, guys. Uh, Grace makes it. Mayhew gets a critical oh. failure. He's <laughs> overboard. He's out. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I think with a crit fail... You definitely can't just save him, uh, Abel. So as the boat crashes against the edge, I think he was holding on to something that snaps off. He falls backwards, and you can barely hear him scream as he falls into the water. Anyone that got a raise notices Mayhew slam into the choppy waters. Look, he's going to immediately see that Abel's going for him, and uh, he's going to join in and help. Abel grabs one of those ropes lying around there we usually use for docking and just whips it out there. Uh, towards Mayhew to try to give him a line to catch on to. You were going to suffer the same effects as Old Boot got on his boating roll. Uh, it's going to be a negative four to try to throw anything to him. The boat is moving. Mayhew is moving. You've got rainwater running down into your eyes. However, I think we decided ropes fall under writing. So what's your writing? Well, my writing's pretty good, and also I'm really comfortable on unsteady platforms. I'm going to make an argument that that talent might impact my ability here, at least make it a negative two. That sounds great. Negative two, writing roll. Great. Writing is a D8. Let's see it, Alex. Here it is. Nice. Minus two makes it a nine. With a raise, even. Okay. Uh, we won't even roll for Mayhew pulling himself in. Just with your uh, your raise, it's enough. All he does is hold on, and you and Lucky pull him into the boat as Old Boot gets Maribel under control and uh, points it against the waves that are crashing against the ship. Old Boot still not doing great, but he's moving it towards the fortress. Uh, Mayhew, uh, soaked, uh, slogging wet, comes up next to Old Boot, points ahead and uh, yells something inaudible to the rest of you. As you look ahead, you can sort of see that in the base of this mesa, there's uh, like a small natural channel that a boat or two might be able to fit in. Uh, it's much wider than it is tall. There's no way like a sailing ship would make it in there. Uh, but something like Old Boot that is combustion powered is going to have no problem making it in there. However, Old Boot is still going to have to make it there. Are you guys doing anything to help? Or rather, what does it look like on the deck of the boat for the Crow Boys as Old Boot battles the weathers of the Great Maze? Harper's uh, up at the front of the boat, and I think he's, he's using his immaculate notice skills to look out for rocks. He's look, mm. he's, Harper's go. looking mm. for rocks. Make a notice roll at, uh, let's see here. It's, Plus two, because he's not, good at this. It's not less than, uh, it's not more than 30 feet. It's probably a negative two from the rain, and then another negative one I won't tell you about. Nope. What's everybody else doing as Harper ineffectually uh, looks into the choppy waters? Thaddeus is trying to assess the damage to the ship and see you know just how bad it is and if there's you know if we're taking on any water or if it's you know something that we can patch up clean up so that way it's not going to be a danger to us while we're on the yeah, ship what, um, sure yeah do we know what caused the damage make a repair roll uh thaddeus um i shouldn't have said that you assume just from slamming into the side of the mesa okay i mean you heard cracks and creaks in that case yeah i'd probably go down below and take a look as well to see if anything's any water's coming in 
Cool. Do you want to make a repair roll as well? Oh, yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> Just going in here, you start to step in water. Um, oh, yikes. Honestly, it's pretty normal in sailing boats for some water to always be in the hole. You know, it's not like they're going to sink for a while, but it, it's coming in. It looks like like maybe a not quite a fist size hole, maybe like two inches was made in the hole, just sort of cracked inwards. Oh. Can I hold uh, my fingers into the hole? The oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I, th- boy. I think that's still a repair roll. That's still a repair roll? Yeah, oh, I think so. No. You yeah. might miss. Are you also a D4 negative two? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. to be fair, you guys didn't uh, well, if you make wanna, your characters If to... you want to repair the boat, I can maybe get a bucket and start... A yeah. bucket? That's yeah. going to take... I mean, the shitload yeah. of water, dude. No. Yeah, well, you know, we can try that. It's huh? just a little hole. I'll just help you then. I'll try and hold the board while the water's coming through while you nail it on there. How's that sound? Okay. We're screwed. Um, Old Boot definitely has, what are they called, bilges set up, like okay. one of those pump systems. We're does fine that, then. What does that give us a modifier to our rolls? Well, okay. What would you get over there, Alex? Well, that's a four. Negative two? Minus two is a two, <laughs> so... Ooh, it's that also, is oh, it four. Up. I was like, that's also a four, but... Uh, Oh. Hey! 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 You know, right. it's it's some transferable skills from yeah. you know supporting mine right, shafts right. to supporting sure, boats. Sure, sure. That's yeah. a seven minus two. That makes it a five. That makes sense, Laura. Too. Hey, we fixed the boat. Hey. Yeah, you fixed one of the wounds on Maribel. Uh, the Ooh. only wound. How do you uh, how do you patch this up? Exactly no. like we described. No shit. <laughs> Fingers. <laughs> now nah, hold it on there. Damn, Ellis, Ellis, you're tough. Hold hold this up for me. Yeah. Hold it. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Then I'm just gonna. Steady my hands here and start slamming. Make sure that we got this set up. That's looking good. That's looking really good. I, I wasn't sure that was going to work. Uh, that actually worked out really nice. I thought we were fucked. As you say that, Ellis, there is a large shutter as you're perhaps knocked to the floor as I'm going to make an attack roll and roll and deal initiative. Wait, what? Dude. We're, fighting a, <laughs> no. we're fighting a maze dragon or a kraken no or way. a giant squid oh. or some shit. That it's would just be awesome. Honestly, all three of those, fish. the giant squid sounds the best. Something attacks the boat <laughs> with a, uh, a D10 and fighting it succeeds it's gonna do a d12 plus six damage oh that's a lot of damage <laughs> why though that's why that's 15 damage maribel has eight total toughness uh three of that is armor but oh no this thing does not have armor piercing just one race who is near the uh the edge of the boat up here where's abel at because i'm right near abel I guess we are near the edge. Yeah, I think Abel and Lucky are up near that edge because Abel's trying to holler out directions and they're, they've just finished pulling Mayhew back on board and shoved him away from the edge. Yeah, Harper was too when he was leaning over looking for, you know, wayfinding. Everyone but Harper succeeded with a raise on the first uh, agility roll, right? Yeah. Everyone close to the edge of the boat needs to make another agility roll. Those of you that got raises can get a plus two from to the roll. Alex, we made a good uh, we made a good move going down under. We'll see. We're going to get ripped <laughs> yeah. out into the ocean oh. from the the bottom of this ship. So right. D10, D10 please, plus two. Seven. Yeah, you got a you got a seven as well. Nine. All of you manage to keep your footing as the boat is violently rocked. And when the waves hit the boat, there's like a parabolum to it. You know, you can feel the the weight of the boat shifting and moving. When whatever hits the boat hits the boat it shudders and like just turns the whole boat turns on its axis like five degrees as something slams into the bottom of the boat splinters come up in a massive roar and gushing of water inside the belly of the boat as maribel takes a wound and old boot uh screams in uh distress as he tries to hold this thing together jesus christ boot what is that as you uh look out into the water harper you can't see whatever lies in the depths of the great maze but whatever it is is large enough that it's creating waves even amidst this storm harp what is it i don't know well it could be anything there boys i don't know just shoot it i can't see shit out there just shoot it okay we're gonna deal initiative Lucky gets an ace of spades. Ace of spades. Alex gets a two of clubs. Abel gets a three of hearts. Harper gets a jack of hearts. Thaddeus gets a king of spades. That's pretty cool. You are the king of spades, dude. I am not going to deal for old boot Mayhew and Grace separately. That seems silly. I'm going to deal one card for them. 
it's a two of spades. We're and straight. And uh, we'll get to that on her turn probably. And then whatever is in the water draws an ace of spades as ace well. Ace of spades. Oh, oh my geez. god, there's two ace of spades. Jeez. Oh, yeah. Another ace of spades. Right. on the Thank table. You. Thanks, Sorry. Thaddeus. Sorry, boys. So it looks like I can make a pair out of spades that are on the table. So I that's cool. That's a thing. That doesn't what? sound good. I don't like this mechanic. What are yeah. you doing? I don't think that's a mechanic at all. I think we're going to give uh, Lucky. Yes. You're used to being Lucky. You know, that's that's your whole life. It's <laughs> a bad you know? start, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't like that. Yeah, now you're start. in the seat, dude. Don't um, talk to me. Talk to Thaddeus. This uh, is Thaddeus. This you're, thing. you're going first. What do you want to do? You're on the edge of the boat, but you're holding on just fine. You can see this rippling, moving wave in the water. Oh, you're not about to fuck me right now. Not yet. Okay, good. Bait and switch. So we still don't know what's out there. It is a moving mass in the water. It's a maze dragon. Come on. It's large. <sighs> How far are we from this, from, you know, getting to a safe haven? Oh, like Old Boot? Well, we'll get to that. I think what Old Boot's going to have to do is he's going to have to perform a boating skill challenge while you guys uh, gotcha. figure out gotcha. this. Gotcha. Um, am I at any penalty to move around the boat? Yeah, I don't think so. Not with all the raises you've rolled, especially, you know. Okay, I'm going to take some rope and go meet up with Harper in the front. You met up with him. He's there. Tie this around you. That's a good idea, Lucky. And yeah, Harper reaches out for the rope and starts to, I think he ties, he's trying to tie both of us to the boat. Yeah. So I'll do that on my turn, I suppose. Awesome. So I'm going to use this pair on the table and we're going to deal Harper a new card, which this round doesn't matter. It's a jack of spades instead of a jack of hearts. I don't know. I don't, <laughs> I don't like know that what, mechanic. Yeah, That's I don't like that scary. mechanic oh, either. So, Lucky, good. you're taking your turn to tie Harper down to the boat. Uh, no, so that's something he's going to do, I guess. Well, I'm going to probably shoot Lady, shoot into the water with Lady. Right? Awesome. So, you're shooting from an unstable platform, and then you're shooting into cover, basically. So, this is a negative four on this roll. It's also dark. We're, we're going to do it in a negative four. <laughs> I yeah, thought about it. Up. I thought about it before up, the session. Man. So it's so a, negative, it's a four. negative four. I'm not counting lighting because I figure cover is already, it's not solid cover. It's like you just can't see it because it's in the water, which feels similar to lighting. That's an eight or minus four plus. That's seven. a hit. That's yeah. a hit. That's a hit. Cool. Right Let's do some damage. 13. Uh, do you have any armor piercing on your weapon? Yeah, yeah, it's got AP1. It's got AP1. Awesome. Well, it still doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> no damage not. is applied to this thing. I guess Lucky can't tell that. He just fires a shot or two into the water, and it just, you know, you can't even see the splash. You can barely hear the gun fire over the sound of the roaring thunder. Moving on to its turn. It's going to swim back around and attack Maribel again. Caleb, I hope, I hope that this thing sinks the boat and the the crows <laughs> die right here. No, 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 I no, hope no. that for you. We're upgrading. We're going um, to the fucking airship. Do we actually see this thing swimming? Do we see like a mass or a fin? You or? see a mass, yeah. Uh, since you took a shot at it, you could make a perception roll if you want, but it's still... Are you kidding? Of course I do. I like the imagery of like a lightning strike going off and then you can see it for mm-hmm. a brief moment the below the waves. Vibinal, you can see yeah. this thing. That's yeah. cool. I like the imagery of it getting struck by lightning and you can see its skeleton. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it's dead. dead. Dead, kill it. Get a nice shot, Lucky. Dude, we gotta kill this thing. I just realized. Uh, six. Oh, That's no, gonna be a real um, problem. For I us. want to kill this thing. So I, I, I think run. some negatives would take you below a success, but I think what you can tell is it is long. It's like 30, 40, 50 feet long. That's nothing. The this water. is a fucking maze yeah, dragon. Yeah, feet, yeah, you know? yeah, so yeah no like, okay, d- d- don't get disappointed. It's not a maze dragon, okay? It's just <laughs> yeah, not. okay. I don't trust you, Caleb. Uh, the horror me. underneath the choppy waves roll a two on its attack. Um, I guess I have bennies to spend on it, but I'm not going to spend bennies on this. It's it's already done some damage. Another shudder can be felt through Maribel as the whole thing rocks and tilts, but no more damage seems to be done underneath, except for the loud thud of this thing against the hull as we cut down below the deck to Thaddeus. This is the type of environment in which you would feel extremely seasick if not for the terror you were facing. Uh, There's another hole that's been punched in the bottom, which is going to be harder to fill because it's underneath the water, you know. What size are we working with? Well, it's the same amount of damage, probably about a a fifth size. Mm. But it's hard to tell with the refractive, refracted moving water. Yeah. 
What do you want to do, Thaddeus? Well, uh, Thaddeus can't really do a whole lot uh, <laughs> above <laughs> the water here. Start or, you stabbing. Know, Listen, top of the boat. You guys better figure this out or you're all going to die. Okay? Yeah, it's, it's pretty bad, right? So Gatling cannon stuff sounds pretty dope, but I've got no shooting. So what if you fix the that boat? That would be dope. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah I'm definitely going to fix the boat. Do it. Because I'm trying to think of everything else. And that's, that's Cast really fireball. Rough. You know, we'll on know the table right now, Thaddeus, is a jack of God spades, damn. a two of spades, and a king of spades. There are several um, spades. You're looking at this, and we sort of cut to Thaddeus's face. Um, I think things sort of quiet down around him, and you can feel your deck of cards burning in your pocket. You can sort of see for a moment in your head like a floating thought, like something you could reach out and touch you could fix this boat without a roll if you let me write down a jack of spades, a two of spades, and a king of spades. Well, I mean, Teddy doesn't want us to die. Oh, my God. Are you You're serious gonna, right now? <laughs> it's just a little hole. That's, that's a lot of spades, right? It's one wound to the boat. That's a lot of spades. Yeah, but... Uh, Dude, that's three cards. We don't even... He just replaced my card. I got lucky this time, but we don't know what is going to happen. 13 damage didn't do enough. We're not trying to kill this thing, man. Know, we're just we, trying to live through it. No, we're trying to which kill means it. means we need a boat. We don't need a boat. <laughs> we can uh, steal another one. We just got to make it, man. You know what? I think I think on this turn, that he sort of shakes the thought from his head for a moment. Oh, shit. What the hell was that? That didn't feel like no boat. I don't know what it was. Against the rock or anything. What the hell? It was big, whatever it was. Shit. Well, they, they might need you up on one of them guns up there. Go, go, go see what's going on. I'll... Uh, uh, shit, I'll try to deal with this one. Are you sure? What if it what if it hits us again? Uh, I mean, you can swim, right? Yeah, tell you what, I'll go take care of this upstairs real fast. I'll be back down in a minute to help you fix this yeah, shit. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Go, go. And uh, I think this round, uh, Thaddeus is going to try to fix it himself. Well, let's see it. No, Caleb, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to use this blue Benny here. Cool. Yeah. So then I'm going to add a D6. Yes. Come on, dice. Attaboy. Yeah. It didn't hit me. Attaboy. That makes it a five. Yes. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. We repair. Uh, <laughs> we're back down to zero wounds again. So just keep doing Thaddeus your thing is down like there. up to like halfway up his shoulders almost. He almost dunks his head underwater to sort of check for where the hole's at and then sort of blindly is digging around and trying to get this thing into place to, to hold it all together. I'll tell you what. After all this, this guy better have a D4 in repair. <laughs> <laughs> Thaddeus is bad at anything just except for the repair, stuff though. he's supposed to be bad at. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> Yeah, what the hell? We cut from uh, Thaddeus uh, covered in sweat and water to Harper above deck. Harper is going to take a second. I think I'm going to use my whole turn to tie Lucky and I both to the boat. I want to make sure that it's tight enough that we can't go overboard even if we lose our footing, but that's what I'm going to spend my whole turn doing. Great. You can tie one of you down for free, but make a roll for to get two of you. Okay. Um, what do you, do you think? Common knowledge or writing for knots? Writing makes the most sense because that's probably where you'd learn all your ropesmanship. Ropes. Knotsmanship? Yeah. Mm. Knotsmanship. Naughty. Seven. You got two of you tied down. Sounds great. Abel. Abel frantically looks around as he watches Harper and Lucky start tying themselves down. Lucky start cracking off some shots at this thing. And he just looks back at old Boot and then hollers out, Hey, Boot, how do we get this thing going faster? We're gonna die, Abel! He bites back the angry retort and instead just shoulders his way past Mayhew and storms his way down the stairs, kind of in that, in like a sliding motion, hands on the rails, you know, almost a big jump down to the bottom. He's headed for the engine and it was gonna stoke this thing with uh, Ghost Rock. You don't even have to go that far. It's on uh, top of the boat uh, as a, uh, oh. yeah, that's that's where I think Old Boot built both of these these tandem engines himself. Uh, let's see, what kind of role is this gonna be? Boating? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So it's, it's like a boating role where you're not taking any negatives because you are not on an unstable platform because you've got that edge and you're not really worried about the conditions because you're just loading shit up so for each success and raise you get on a boating roll uh we'll give old boot a plus one unless you have a better argument nope you got a five so he's gonna get a plus one you open it up and you can immediately hear the screaming of damned souls as you shovel even more into the furnace green fire licks out uh we cut to uh old boot as he holds on for dear life and he's gonna make a boating roll Oh, At boom, minus three now. At minus three, thank God. 
Nice. Okay. <laughs> he succeeded once. Way to go, Abel. Um, I'm going to spend uh, a red Benny for old boot here. Uh, Not a raise. Mm-hmm. Damn! So he's going to put one success down in his uh, dramatic success chart here. And uh, he holds on for dear life, uh, but doesn't damage the boat as he uh, he keeps it moving. He needs four successes. Mayhew, sopping wet, is going to chamber this uh, Winchester. Uh, he's going to take a shot. He's got D D8 shooting. Uh, he misses badly. Um, Grace is going to do the same thing. Uh, she hits. Um, so she pulls up this uh, rifle um, that's sort of accented in turquoise. Um, she's got a cord around her hat that's holding it to her even in the rain as she fires and does fucking nothing. Like seven <laughs> damage. Uh, with that, it is hey, Ellis. How, how pissed would you guys be if I jumped off this boat into the ocean right now? Very. Because <laughs> it's going like, to be like a negative six to swim back to the boat or something. Yeah, I don't think I can get back to the boat without a rope. It is a dangerous endeavor. I know. I, I would liken it unto like jumping on the back of a rock, you right. know, and trying to fight it in the air. Yeah. <laughs> this is cool. Child, I don't say why you say it like that. Rock. That sounds really cool. <laughs> it does sound cool, but god damn it, you could die. Right. Is there even a swimming role? Athletics? It's, it's athletics. athletics. Uh, okay. I mean, I don't really have to swim. Yeah, though, right? yeah, you'd just be fighting it. It'd be if you wanted to get away, it might be a swimming role. It might be a good idea for me to distract it and maybe get killed, but what do you say? <laughs> I thought you were going to get on the Gatling gun. I don't know. I feel gun. like the Gatling gun might be a little bit of a I'm the choice. worst person on this ship to be on that Gatling gun. I argue that Thaddeus is the worst person to be yeah. on there. I've got I think no we're shooting. Equal. Okay, yeah. I'm well, I mean, I could, well, we're tied down. We're not going anywhere. Well, we are probably close enough to a Gatling like, We definitely put one like in the front half of the yes. boat. Yeah. Oh, we yeah, are close we enough. We put one on front, yeah. one in back. So oh, you guys got this cool. Gatling gun on yeah, lock. Yeah, let's do this shit. But Ellis emerges from the hole of Maribel, and you can see this dark shape in the water that has turned turned and is coming back on an attack course may towards add, the boat. May I add? Yeah. As I emerge from below deck, before I do so, um, Old Boot has a cross-stitched thing hanging next to the door. It says, bless this mess. And there's a Bowie <laughs> knife he uses it, that he uses to hang it from the wall. Yeah. Right? <laughs> this is yeah. canon, right? We yeah. talked about this uh-huh. several sure. times. Okay. I take that Bowie knife and put it in my mouth and then... I emerged from deck. But you said I see this thing right below. You see it right below the water. Take a take a uh, Benny for the for the stitching. That's a blue Benny too. Wow. Yeah. Guys, I I really want to jump in I, there. I really want to jump in there. You have a lot of Benny. I'm conflicted. I really want to see you do it, but also I don't want Ellis to die again. What well, if I just go, say Godspeed boys and jump in the water? Unless it bites you on your head, you're fine. <laughs> and then you I'll just be like missing a, a torso if it bites me otherwise <laughs> in, yeah. the, in the water. Well, it like regrows some shit. Don't you? Don't you heal? takes a while it's like a long time <laughs> yeah <need> raw meat. <laughs> i'm sorry boys but i think i want to jump in there all right dude you gotta do can i get up. can i spin this turn um is there another rope that i can grab if you want to spend your turn doing that absolutely <sighs> <laughs> you're not gonna waste a single turn i'm going for it boys yeah, I'm, right, going for it. I'm going Fuck. for it and nobody right. hears him say it this all is right. the stupidest the thing i've ever done yeah i don't know why you're doing this <laughs> This is cool. Well, he yeah, does have a cool death wish. I do. This is exactly up my in my wheelhouse, I feel yeah. like. Yeah, okay. All right, I'll give uh, you that. G- get another Benny Alex for, another p- one? for this potentially, is potentially terrible. committing suicide. <laughs> <laughs> right, you're, well, you're playing hard <laughs> into right. your, uh, your flaw there. Well, he's so. got six bits. We slowly fade from this scene to blackness, and then from blackness to the town of Silver Tree, the hometown of the Crow Brothers. It's late in the afternoon as the uh, camera opens on their little ranch. It's more run down than the last time we saw it. Although I suppose the last time we saw it, it was in flames. But the modern incarnation of the nest was well maintained. You know, Lucky lived on the ranch for a long time. The nest we see now is in disrepair. Uh, Meadow, you being left alone with um, only your disinterested teenagers and kids to deal with it, it's not gone well. And the the scene we open on, Meadow, is uh, you're in the house and you start to hear some noises from the barn. Uh, What are you doing inside of the crow house, the nest? 
what, how many teenage boys are living here currently? Probably dishes, because I assume they eat just constantly. There is only one teenage boy living in the nest alley. That would be Elijah Lee Crow. However, there's another crow still living with you now, uh, Harper. He is not quite a teenager yet, though. Uh, Lucky also lives here, who I suppose is a teenager. I would have to consult the timeline. I think he's about 12 or 13. I think he's just a little bit older than Harper is. Um, But he's not here today, unlike uh, the other two boys. So you're doing dishes, and over the clatter of them in this wash pan you have, uh, you sort of lean back and you look, and it appears someone has opened your barn door. It looks like an adult, maybe five foot five. Well... She's definitely grabbing her gun and going out to see what the fuck's going on. We get this shot of a older meadow crow than last time we saw her. I think she's getting into her 40s, early 50s. What? She's that yeah. old? Yeah, dude. Oh my god. She's like 60 when the show starts? Yeah. <laughs> So we get this shot of this 40-ish meadow crow, uh, hands still wet and wrinkled from the water and from age, and she reaches up to grab that old rifle she's had practically her whole life. She takes it off the two nails and starts to walk outside. Uh, You've got boots on, I imagine. What's meadow wearing? Uh Oh! She's a pretty simply dressed lady. Got a, you know, that sky blue she really likes is her shirt. Probably pants, because who has time for skirts these days, honestly? Uh, You kick up some dust as you walk in this hot, dry day. And as you come closer to the barn, you can see it's been swung wide open. And there is apparently a man holding on to a lead off the only horse left on your ranch. He's got it in one hand, and he's leading it out of the barn. Oh, I think you should stop right there, maybe? Where do you think you're going? Uh, He kind of looks up in surprise shock. Uh, He's in his, like, early 50s. He's bald with a patchy, gray, scraggly, short beard. Um, He's wearing a worn and dusty brown three-piece suit with a black bow tie, riding boots on. Uh, He stops in his tracks and goes, uh, Well, well, ma'am, I believe it's been a few years since we last saw each other, but uh, last we spoke, uh, you and your husband still owed me and my partners quite a bit of cash. And seeing as you have not paid up, I have come to collect collateral. That's a funny way of saying you're going to steal my only left asset. I mean, what what do you want me to do? Well, yeah. You know, ma'am, uh, he's like kind of sweating, uh, looking down, not making eye contact. And then like suddenly he kind of wipes his forehead and stares straight at you, kind of puffs out his chest. You know, ma'am, every time I've come here, uh, you've always had some sob story for me. The first time it was your husband done left you and your young children. The second time it was your husband had passed away. And now I come to you and now it's your only asset. What am I to do? You think that I don't have mouths to feed as well, ma'am? This is my rightful property, not yours. I know we're in pretty deep here, and I too, I have mouths to feed right outside somewhere, running around doing God knows what. But you're going to want to drop that lead right there, or you might as well add your funeral expenses to my bill as well. Sounds like an intimidate role to me, sure Allie. Sure does. I don't have my... What's her intimidate? I think at this point in her life, Meadow probably has a D8 in intimidate. Oh, I mean, I think... Good. I don't know how you feel, but I feel like that was one of her best tools in her toolbox to manage her kids. <laughs> was just through. <laughs> I was going to yeah. say a D10. Oh, oh, shit. I was too, especially since we're on our home turf, you know, she gets a bonus. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> okay, all right. The boys have spoken. They're stepping up for their ma. All right. D10. Uh, you are rolling this at negative uh, four because I don't think he really thinks you're going to shoot him and he's lawfully allowed to be here. That's fair. I got a, well, you know, I got a three. Cool. Which is a bummer. Uh, his hand tightens on the reins and he uh, bites his lower lip for a minute before like pointing it out at you. Ma'am, I would be happy to take this matter to the town marshal, who I know personally very well. If you want to shoot a man in cold blood on your property, a friend of the marshal, I guess that's your business. But I'm in the business of making money. 
grabs the horse and starts to walk away. It's up to you, Meadow. I mean, he is on your property. He is. And you do have a working relationship with the town marshal, if nothing else, at this point in time. At what point in the timeline did they start, like, fucking, though? That's a good question. (laughs) I don't want to (laughs) know. I was thinking about that earlier Probably today. after the boys left, you know, most of the boys. <laughs> I don't know. You started coming like... around helping out with some of the stuff. Wow. <laughs> I, th- I feel like we would have been in less trouble had she been sleeping with the marshal. Yeah, that's fair. I think it's like you're like both parents of kids at school that like don't like each other, but you're still forced to go to meetings together and stuff. Oh God, that's the worst. <laughs> I think seeing him walking forward, trying to lead her horse out, she shakes her head and tightens her grip on the gun and takes aim. Okay. As soon as the sound of the lever clicking kind of rings out into the barn, a young, I don't know, 14 to 16, somewhere in there, Ellis kind of appears behind Ma. Well, shoot, I didn't know you were having company today, Ma. Well, neither did I. She says, still aiming her gun. Yep. (laughs) What you doing here, mister? He stops in his tracks, looks around, and scoffs at your mother uh, aiming a gun at him. Well, son, your folks ain't too good with money, and they decided that they would take some of mine and not pay me back. So I'm taking my payment back. And he, like, tugs on uh, this horse's neck. Well, that doesn't sound like too good of an idea to me, mister. No, I don't think it does. What, you're going to shoot me in cold blood out here? Wouldn't be the first time. (laughs) Oh, shit. (laughs) Do you want to make some sort of roll for that? I don't know what kind of... Is it a lie? It's got to be a lie, right? Yeah. Can I I assist in some way with this? Yeah, make another intimidate roll uh, just at flat. And for every success and raise you get, we'll give Ellis a plus one on this roll. It's probably like untrained persuasion. I don't even think I have any persuasion on Ellis. Cool. Yeah, her I, I think, um, doesn't everyone has a D4 in Persuasion? Oh, okay. Is that anyone? Yeah. yeah. It's one of those. Okay. So I got so an eight. So just roll a D4. Ooh, an eight. So that's two raise. That's a success in a raise. So you get a plus two to this, Alex. With plus two, that's a five. Coming in clutch. Ooh. He believes you. What, what, what do you mean? Life's rough out here on these ranches, mister. You got to fend for yourself sometimes. Someone's trying to steal your horse. Sometimes you gotta put a bull in them. I ain't trying to steal your horse. This is my rifle property. I don't believe it is. I think Ma bought that uh, a few years back. Got the papers and everything. Wanna see him? Go to hell. I'll be talking to the town marshal about this. I'll be back for this horse. Oh, you do that. Uh, he drops the reins angrily and starts to stomp back off towards his horse. Say, mister, that wasn't your uh, that wasn't your rifle on that horse, was it? The one out front? He, like, stops midway between his horse and you, and then he starts to, like, jog, shuffle towards his horse. We cut to it as he runs up with a, like, sweaty, bald head and looks at the uh, empty holster, the rifle holster in his horse, and he looks back to Ellis. What the hell's the meaning of this? You can't be leaving uh, your property unattended like that around here. People are liable to come and take it. I saw one of those, uh, I think it was one of those Mar- Marston boys. Oh, they are always getting into trouble. I think he took your rifle and took off. <laughs> it's a real shame. Damn shame. <laughs> You took my rifle, you lying shit. Are you calling my son a liar? I will be talking to the town marshal about this as soon as possible, and I will return post haste. He humps and uh, tries to pull himself onto his horse, uh, and after a few attempts, kind of shakily uh, gallops off towards the town of Silver Tree. What'd you do with that gun? It's inside. <laughs> He's going to be back for that. Well, make sure to hide it. Things are, uh, things are getting pretty bad, huh, Ma? Um, I mean, I'd I'd be lying if I said that they weren't, but we're doing what we can to mop up this mess your daddy left us in. I'm not able to make much money here in Silver Tree. Maybe it's, uh, remember what we were talking about the other day? I remember what you were talking about the other day. Sounds like a pretty good idea to me. I can maybe go out there, go east, find some good, honest work, send the money on back home. Is it just about the money? Well, no. I mean, I've always wanted to experience a little adventure. Silver Tree's, uh, you know, done everything there is to do here, Ma. Everything? Really? Everything I could think of. Shoot, I must have jumped off Dead Man's Drop a hundred times by now. It's not even fun anymore. (laughs) I'm sure you could find a way to make it fun again, but... (sighs) You got another mouth to feed now, too. And I don't even know where it is right now. (laughs) 
there's a, like a long, lingering, sad shot. I used to visit my grandfather up in Montana. He was on this farm. And the thing that struck me about Montana is how fast clouds were. You could see these massive shadows that would roll over these large, like empty hills. Uh, not a tree except for the ones the farmers planted. And I imagine silver tree a bit like that, but a lot dustier, a lot lonelier. As that line sort of whisks out into the lonely air, a massive shadow crosses over you guys as the clouds cover the sun. I ain't no kid no more, Ma. I'm ready. I I know you're grown up and that's... I, sh- I should have expected it, but seems to sneak up on me every time. I think I think it might be good for you to get out there and see some see some of the world and then maybe come on back. Yeah, I could always come on back. I got this train station here now. Won't be nothing. Speaking of which, tomorrow's Wednesday. I think a train heading east is leaving tomorrow. Meadow's feeling very conflicted. Because she enjoys her own personal freedoms and she wants her sons to experience that as well. But at the same time, that means another one of her boys is just going to be in the wind and who knows if if or when he'll ever come back. But I think that realization just dawns in her eyes and she pretty pointedly looks up at the clouds racing on by. You've been taking care of us for a long time now, Ma. It's about time some of us took care of you. Well, what would you want for your last meal? What do we got? Beans, probably. (laughs) (laughs) I'll tell you what, we got some beans. Maybe me and Harper can go get us a rabbit today. Make a little stew, maybe. How's that sound? Well, I'll believe that rabbit when I see it. (laughs) Well, I got this nice new gun, so maybe we'll have a chance now. (laughs) All right, go get them. You see uh, Ellis run off towards the house as uh, the shadow passes and light hits the roof. We cut inside to the lit upper loft where um, I suppose two bunk beds are. All the crows have slept in every configuration possible in all of these beds at some point in their lives. But uh, I think lounging around up here is, uh, is Harper. Uh, I think Harper is sitting cross-legged on the ground. He's in, you remember episode one, his outfit? He's wearing exactly that, except, you know, to scale. (laughs) Uh, I thought you went the Phantom Menace. (laughs) (laughs) No, uh, Harper's wearing some, like, like holy work pants. Uh, He's got, like, a shirt that's, like, unbuttoned, like, halfway down. I think he's just in, like, chill mode at this point. I think out in front of him, he has that rifle on the ground and he's like too scared to touch it but he's really excited about it so he has it set out and he's kind of you know doing that thing that kids do where he wants to play with something but he's a little too scared to so he's just kind of like contemplating whether or not he should um and he's just yeah like on his knees just looking down at this gun and you hear uh the clambering of someone coming up the ladder uh well he knows that mama never comes up here so it's either lucky or ellis and i think he feels good about that so he just kind of glances over at him so you have the rifle that i just nicked from the guy yeah okay (laughs) oh my god okay cool (laughs) yeah i think you just see um the head of uh young ellis poke up over this was this you or lucky ah i nabbed it It uh somebody came by to don't worry about it harbor uh, I decided to take the day off of work. I was thinking maybe you, me, and Lucky could go take that thing out and give it a whirl. What do you say? You want to go take a, a stolen gun out shooting? Yeah. It's, no one's going to see us. It's middle of nowhere. Plus, he's not even from in town. Uh, Harper kind of scrambles over to the corner of the loft to look down to make sure that Ma's not in the building. And he kind of looks back and makes eye contact with Ellis and just nods his head excitedly. Where'd Lucky run off to? He never tells me. He just goes. A little bit of suspicion kind of comes into his eyes. You took the whole day off? Yeah, I thought I could, uh, you know, thought we could go hang out like we used to. Since when do you do that and not work? We can afford to take one day off, right? Every once in a while? Harper kind of settles back down and sits back down with his back up against the wall and kind of looks over at Ellis. There's a long pause as Harper kind of starts to think to himself, Ellis, are you, are you going to leave? Yeah. Tomorrow morning. 
tomorrow morning? There's even, a train leaving. Even Abel gave us a week. Why are you just going to up and leave? I'm sure you've noticed that Ma's been selling some things lately. Little things here and there, trying to make extra money. The guy I stole that gun from, uh, he was taking our last horse. Things are getting bad, Harp. Yeah, but things has been bad for a long time, Ellis. You can't just up... We need you here. You can't just up and leave. Hey, but I can make money. I can go get a real job somewhere. Ain't no money here. <sighs> Listen, it won't be like Abel, all right? It won't be like that. Is. I'll come back. Come back for Christmas and birthdays. I got that train here now. Just hop on one of those. Come back anytime I want. Yeah, but Abel said that, too. He ain't never come back. Well, I'm not going to join the army like Abel did. I figure I'll, I don't know, get some ranch work. You ain't going to get no ranch work. You didn't do no ranch work when you was here. You said it was too boring. I did enough. You better come back, okay? You hear me? I promise. There's a hug. And we cut. Thank you for listening to Sounds Like Crows. If you like the show, please tell a friend about us. It's our easiest way to gain new listeners. Thaddeus was played by Marshall Sims, at Mr. Malicious One. Abel was played by Isaac Sunstead, at Abel the Crow. Elijah Lee Crow was played by Alex Horrell, at Alex Horrell. Luciano Lucky Crow was played by Cameron Day, who you can find on our Patreon-exclusive Discord server. Harper was played by Cameron Reed at CJReed211. Meadow Crow was portrayed by Allie, who you can find on Twitter at UCTheHat, or on her podcast RPG for You and Me at RPGForYouAndMe.com. And I'm Marshall Caleb at MarshallCaleb on Twitter. See you next Monday. <laughs>